ko, ehi passi ko, o banai. Good evening all. My name is Dennis Shepherd, and I'm here today to uh, do another guided meditation for you on behalf of our new care group here at the Buddhist Society of Western Australia. As I've mentioned to you before, we are starting uh, a listening service. Uh, we have several dedicated volunteers who have uh, trained to, uh, to, be, to be there, to be there for, to receive your calls, calls that might might, might consist of all sorts of, of, uh, of things that you might want to talk about that might be just very simple things, but it also might be uh, that you're feeling a bit lonely, depressed or anxious, even, I dare I say, a little bit suicidal or thinking about uh, issues as dark as that. So our volunteers will be available and the service will be starting somewhere around the beginning of May. So we are gearing up for it at the present time. But in the meantime, we thought that we would uh, just uh, come to you with some of these guided meditations that just embed a lot of the listening skills that our, our, our listeners uh, have been training with. And I think you will remember over the last uh, three sessions that we've done, we have already looked at topics such as loss and grief, and we've looked at uh, topics like anxiety and depression and fear, and we've also looked at the, at the, the way that emotional noise arises inside us. This emotional noise is very important, of course, and um, important for you to see, and, and really important to know that you can actually see this emotional noise in your meditation practice. So in many ways, you certainly can be uh, your own listener, your own listener, your own carer, in fact, during this, doing this uh, meditation for yourself. And this is what this really, these sessions are all about. They're guided meditations that will help you uh, understand the potential you have to be a listener, a listener for yourself, so that you can uh, really start to begin, uh, start to begin to see and understand uh, just what it is that makes you tick as a person, that makes you where your worries are, where your trials and tribulations in life might be, so that you can use your meditation in a very, very skillful way to just be with it, to be with it, just to listen to yourself, listening to yourself and, and being able to just, uh, as you sit with these, these issues, just allowing them to be and to be, be allowing them to be yourself to become still uh, with what these conditions uh, might be as they're forming. We have already looked at uh, uh, at three different topics that we look at to, as as listeners. We've looked at loss and grief. We've also looked at anxiety and depression and uh, and perhaps fear. Certainly fear around the the. Uh, trials and tribulations that we're all going through over the whole world at the moment with the COVID, um, the COVID things that are happening. And also, and most importantly, we've been looking at, uh, at what it is inside us that provides the emotional noise that comes up with our thinking and our, the way that our mind sort of goes to these different problems and situations that we might be, might be trying to deal with. So that emotional noise that we can feel inside, this is really heading more towards the feeling side of our, our meditation, so that we can certainly use our, our thinking part, the intellectual side of things that sort of brings up, brings up perceptions, brings up ideas like this, but we also want to look at the feeling side of it, just the emotional noise that comes with those, uh, those thoughts uh, that, that can... Uh, make us feel so bad at, at any particular time. Today I would just like to look at some uh, and develop in the guided meditation that we'll do in a moment just some, uh, some things that help you to be a more effective, effective listener for yourself. And I've, uh, I've just made a little list here of some of the things that we go through with our, 
our, our carers uh, are just in when they're looking at all this for themselves. And the first thing is just really in the way that we attend to ourselves, the way that we uh, allow ourselves to to exist as the, in the way that we are, accept ourselves, just attending, attending to what what we're needing, to uh, to be able to. Yeah, it's mostly just accepting, just accepting ourselves the way that we are. But if we can attend to ourselves in that way, and then in Looking further, we can sort of look at just how congruent we are, just what we're trying to hide, what we're in, in the way that we maybe think about something and then it follows through with the feelings. But if we're, in a way, uh, somewhat uh, trying to hide what we're thinking, there's an incongruency that sort of starts to happen there, so that we're looking more to try and make ourselves congruent so that we can see when we feel what we're thinking about, we can actually look back at what we are thinking and, and accept it as, uh, as what it is and not try and deny what it is. So that idea of being congruent inside oneself. And then of course we're also looking for the silences and the silences are just so very important in, in meditation as I'm sure that you all know. Just the silence just to be able to be there in that stillness, in that still silence because that's certainly uh, what, builds, what, what builds a lot of depth into the meditation. And just in the way that I've got a little note here, for it, like paraphrasing, this would probably be more uh, apparent if there was someone actually listening to you, just so that you can go back over what you're thinking, go back over what you're thinking, just to make sure that, that you did get it right, that you, are, you do understand completely just the congruency that's running through you. So maybe using that in a, in a, in a way of, of paraphrasing or just understanding that you have actually, you are thinking um, clearly with, your, with, the, with the feelings that you're feeling inside. Clarifying all the time. So meditation naturally does this anyway, doesn't it? It sort of allows you to clarify what you're thinking about to be able to make it very clear so that it becomes very bright. It's almost like you're cleaning your windows, if you like, so that as you're looking out, you're getting a very, very good, clear view of, of just what it is that's happening for you inside. And then, of course, you're reflecting back, too. You're being able to use that clarity to, to reflect back uh, from yourself, for yourself so that you can, you can start to be with what you're feeling with what you're thinking, and just know it as being, just without any doubts, just so that that reflection becomes really clear, and the clarity certainly helps you with that. And then of course there's just that feeling of empathy as well, so just being really careful to know that what you're feeling is true, it's, it's a, and, that you're, and that you're accepting what it is that, that you're, you're feeling. You might want to change what you, you might not like, the, the feeling that you're feeling. But the very first thing to do, of course, always is just to recognise that this is the way that it is. And then to have some empathy with that. And once that empathy is, is, is garnered with the feeling, well then you can very clearly start to sort of change it, the way that you're thinking about something and, um, and being able to start to, to work, work towards making a change towards it, towards making making your, what you're feeling inside a little bit more, uh, a little bit more peaceful, a little bit more happy, perhaps even a little bit more sane, you might even uh, want to say. And then, of course, there's uh, non-possessive warmth. So that's really, in a way, just starting to feel warm about you. So being, again, it, gets, it comes back to this accepting thing, but just having a warmth towards the way that you are, even if what you're seeing is not what you like. Just say, oh, well, it's, this is the way it is. I just need to, uh, to, to get on with that. I can change it. I don't have to be like this all of the time. You know, I might have this page in my book, but I know that in my book there is many, many, many good pages, many, many good things about my life. And then, of course, the last thing that I've got on this little list here is positive stroking. 
So it doesn't even hurt, even in a meditation session, to be able to to be able to really think uh, positive things about yourself. And I always get a great example from Ajahn Brahm when I'm looking at this, because he is a person, of course, that is very, very positive about himself. In fact, uh, I would even go as far as to say that I'm sure that, uh, and I'm sure Ajahn Brahm would agree with me when I say this, but I think that Ajahn Brahm loves himself. And this is a wonderful, uh, a wonderful thing to see, really, because it, it offers us all a great, uh, a, a, a great way to be able to sort of be with ourselves. Because after all, if you, if you can't be happy and positive and loving of yourself, it's very, very difficult to project that out into the world in a, in a congruent way. So you can see all these words that I've uh, brought to bear here in, in terms of the way that we, we practice to listen to somebody else. We can use all these words for ourselves to listen into our, listen into our own uh, meditation practice, to our own feelings and what's happening, so that we can work towards making a positive change. But of course all of this too is in a way uh, predicated on us uh, being able to develop this meditation process. And meditation I think uh, we all know, in a way, is really a way of uncovering the present moment. It's a way of coming deep into the, into the stillness of the present moment. And then we, we recognise, of course, that this present moment is the, the balance point, the point between what's happened in the past and, of, and looking towards the future. We know that at, that at this balance point that the future is yet to come. So when we are able to be totally with the present moment, we're really right there in, in a sense, in a place of reality. Because the past is finished and the present is still yet to come. And if we can practice to be like that and if we can practice to uncover this present moment more and more so that we can actually be with this still consciousness that is just naturally arises as you get close to that present moment. It just naturally arises and it's there and it's very peaceful and it's very beautiful and it's very truthful. So when we are able to develop that and cultivate that, we can use that stillness uh, with, and by bringing in all of these other elements that I've been talking about here, elements that might be causing us trouble, whether it's loneliness or whether you're feeling anxious or, 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 or depressed, um, whatever the feeling is, when that stillness is there, you can bring a feeling like that into the stillness and the stillness will penetrate into it and relax it. So that's really exactly the same thing as saying it, what, what it's doing is it is relaxing your body and it's relaxing your mind. So, with those few words, we'll move into the guided meditation and, um, and hopefully you will be able to, uh, uh, to work with this in your own uh, meditation practice. So, as always, when we're beginning meditation, we do like to ground ourselves first of all. So, to that extent, what I'm going to ask you to do now is just to find yourself a nice comfortable seat and make your back nice and straight. Put your hands together, your right, right hand on the left and your thumbs just gently touching. Your head pointing, top of the head pointing towards the ceiling. And then just close your eyes. And just let your tongue rest gently against the palate of your mouth. And just start to breathe and just to notice yourself breathing. And you can make a little resolution to yourself that you're going to leave the outside outside and just come inside. So we're coming in just to see what's happening inside this body. As the Buddha said, inside this fathom length body. Just leaving everything external to leave it out there without going out to disturb it. So bringing yourself inside, inside your body and just starting to notice 
your breathing. But before that, just in the way to anchor the body, I'd like you just to just do a, f a sweep through your body just by starting at your toes, feeling your toes as they're touching the floor or perhaps if they're inside a pair of socks, you might be able to feel the fabric of the socks on your toes. If you still can't feel them, you can just give them a little wiggle until you've got your attention right inside your toe. And then just gradually bring your attention over the arch of your foot. You can even sense and feel the way that that shapes into your heel. As I do that for myself now, I can feel that there is a little bit of callus there on the heel of my foot. And then moving the attention up through the ankles, and noticing the way that all that articulates your foot with, the, with your leg. Then moving up through the shins and the calves. Up through the knees where they're bent. And all the way through this, just if you're noticing anything that's tense, anything that needs to be relaxed, just let it gently relax. Then moving up through your thighs. All the time trying to just experience what this body's like. I mean, when I feel my thighs, I can sort of feel that the muscles in there are quite large. It actually feels quite powerful in a way. It's quite, you can feel that there's a lot, of, a lot of strength there. And then moving past your bottom as it's sitting on your seat. Just the pressure of that. And you can even feel, sense the way that the gravity is just pulling you into your seat. But you're not slumping, you're just gently using your energy just to keep your body nice and erect, well adjusted, so that you're actually have got very good energy in your body. As you move up into the lower part of your back and your stomach, feeling into the tummy with any gurgles or rumblings that might be happening. And then moving up into the upper area of your back around your shoulder blades and the front part of your chest where there's usually plenty of rhythms and, and motion going on, little rushes, openings and closings, that sort of thing. You can sense if you just look and feel into your chest. And then round your shoulders and the way your arms are hanging down the side of your body bent at the elbows and into your forearms, through that articulation of your wrists, into your hands and your fingers. And then as I've mentioned in previous guided meditations too, the fingers I always find to be very useful to help with relaxation because there is a lot of nerve endings in your fingers. You can feel the way that the energy buzzes there. It's sort of like effervescent, sizzling or like effervescent feeling, tingling. And I find on some occasions when this happens you can and you get relaxed enough, you can just allow that tingling to, it'll just sort of run further, run further over, even over to your whole body. So that you in fact can feel that energetic movement on your skin. It makes you feel very light, very relaxed. 
So then moving from the shoulders up through the neck into your head, down round your lips, round your eyes and in the back of your eyes, and moving up to the top of the head. Again, there's oftentimes a little bit of tingling around there as well. And then as you're feeling relaxed inside your body, just to allow yourself to find your breath. Just as it flows in and out in a very natural way. Not forcing anything. Just allowing the breath to be there and to know where it is. Because this breath as it flows in and out is already giving us a good idea of one of the most important teachings that the Buddha gave and that's inside his Four Noble Truths. Because with each breath coming in, we're noticing the second noble truth. We're watching a condition begin. And then as the breath flows out, we're watching the third noble truth. Just that conditioning finishing. And you can easily get the feeling of the way that the out-breath conditions the in-breath. The in-breath coming in conditions the out-breath. And this conditions the in-breath. So we have this condition beginning and ending. And perhaps if I can remember later in the meditation, we'll bring this up a little bit a little bit more in while we're looking at, at more conditions, at the scales of the different conditions that come and go, that begin and end, so that we can really get a good idea of what the Buddha meant when he was talking about the Four Noble Truths. So just allowing yourself to breathe in and breathe out. And just noticing how you are feeling quite grounded in your body now. How your body is sort of settled into its position. And there's relaxation starting to come. It's starting to become naturally because you're starting just to focus on just one thing, just the breath. You're certainly hearing the words that I'm speaking and once again with that you can notice how these words too are beginning and ending. And there's a word coming into your mind. And then as it, the word finishes, you can see how it ends. And you can perhaps even start to notice that in the beginning and ending of these words that there's a stillness that there, it's coming out of and a stillness that these words are going back into. Just in the same way that the breath is coming out of a stillness, out of the stillness that's surrounding everything. And then as it comes out and begins, the breath 
reaches its peak and then it finishes. And once again it's finishing in the stillness. In the same way that the words that I'm speaking begin and end in the stillness. So just even in this short time, you're able to see when the mind is not moving that these natural things like the breath or the words that are coming and going are just arising and finishing in the stillness. There's no other movement except for the breath. And in fact, you don't even need to listen to the words. You can just stay with the stillness. Allow yourself to relax into it. In fact, you can allow yourself to even, if you like, take great pleasure from the stillness because it is such a pleasurable thing. You can notice what that's like when there's no movement of your mind, when there's no thoughts. Just feel, feel that stillness. How beautiful it is. There's a great beauty in it. It's almost like it's, it's there to, to bring you joy because it's, it's in a way bringing you home. It's bringing you right back into the present moment. As you start to notice and become more and more aware of this still consciousness that is there, surrounding the breath, surrounding the words. You can start to appreciate that the stillness is very, very important to understand. This is consciousness. And this still consciousness is what makes up our mind. We can say that it is the mind. And when we focus just on the stillness, we can see that there is an emptiness that's, that has this empty quality. It has this spacious quality. What we're looking at here is pure consciousness. Consciousness that's not moving. Not moving apart from the iteration that happens just the way that it begins and ends so very fast. It almost appears like a stream in time, like a stream of consciousness. Just happening in time. And I would like to suggest that you can even, if you like, wallow in it. Really take pleasure from it. Because it is beautiful. It's so compelling, complete. You can sense that you are totally anchored when you know that it's there. because you can know that it is there all of the time. The only thing is that we never notice. 
our minds are always a bit too distracted to relax in the way that we're doing now, just to notice that that stillness is there, resounding, iterating, beginning and ending so very fast. The Buddha said, countless times in the wink of an eye, it begins and ends, countless times. So that it appears as if it's just like a flow of consciousness. But it's a flow of still consciousness. And then we can start to see the way that conditions come out of it, like the breath, and then return into it. The breath beginning and ending. Second noble truth and third noble truth. Right there for us to see. And I'd like you to appreciate just how powerful this still consciousness is. This still consciousness that we really never take much notice of. But this still consciousness is a very, very powerful energy. And in fact, as we sit with it more and more, we can start to appreciate it more and more and allow it to become part of our lives so that we have it with us as we're living our lives day to day while we're doing our work, while we are socialising, while we're thinking, it is possible to notice that still consciousness is there all of the time. We can feel it, we can sense it. And just with a few of those words that I was talking about before, like clarity, Notice that when that consciousness is there, your mind is very clear. There's just the stillness and nothing else. In reality, you can actually see right to the end of the universe when this still consciousness is present. And it becomes our work to make it bright, to make it vivid in our minds. And when that stillness is there in your mind, you will notice that the things that you see have a vividness about them. And as you practice to be mindful of the stillness, You can notice how the stillness does become very bright, very vivid. And the conditions that come and go, when you've got that stillness present, become even more clear, more precise, more resolved. You can notice how it helps to bring about samadhi, to bring about concentration. 
but allows us to see deeply into our minds and ultimately into the world, into the universe. The other very beautiful thing about this still consciousness is that you can know because you are very present when that stillness is there. You can know that you are very close to truth. And wherever there is truth, there is usually beauty that surrounds it and so it is with the still consciousness the stillness of mind. It is so beautiful to be with, so joyful, so happy. I'm certainly not talking here about any excited state of mind or a mind where you're losing control or anything like, or anything like that. This is a very, a very subtle joy but nonetheless it's a beautiful joy. And as you start to understand it and be with it, you can see that when this stillness of mind has this mindfulness behind it and has this quality of beauty about it, that it is irresistible. You want to be with it. It's very energetic. And as you start to be with it and understand it more, you can see that it has this ability to penetrate into conditions just as we've been looking at before, but it will penetrate into conditions and relax them. The stillness can relax your body, relax your mind. And any of the trials and the tribulations that you might feel in your life can be brought into your mind at a time like this. And if you can surround those troubles with the stillness. The stillness will penetrate into them, will relax them, and will break them up. Because those very, very conditions have been created from the still consciousness. They're being created through the processes that the Buddha described with the first noble truth. They have begun in the stillness. And you can, using your wisdom and insight, see how they will also finish and can finish in the stillness. How you can relax those troubles, let them go. In fact, this is the way that we learn how to let go. We bring our troubles into the stillness, allow the stillness to penetrate into them, and then allow the stillness just to let them go. We don't have to grasp them anymore because we know that they're just conditions coming and going. It's just the first and the second noble truth. Doing what it naturally does. And then the other thing to notice about this still consciousness is that it is also the creative force. The creative force that brings about the second noble truth, 
the way that it arises, comes into existence. We can notice that any condition, all conditions, they arise in the stillness of mind. So when you know the stillness, it is possible to start to cultivate and for you to bring into existence some conditions of mind that are helpful for you. Helpful for your family. Helpful for your friends. But most importantly, conditions that are helpful for yourself. So you can bring into mind loving kindness. You can bring into mind empathy. You can bring into mind that congruence I was talking about. So that what you're thinking and what you're projecting externally is congruent. So that things are consistent. And when you can start to create your life like this, it is a recipe for happiness, a recipe for joy and harmony. Because the other thing that you really do see in all of this is that we are all in the same boat, a term that I hear very much today in this COVID crisis. We are all in this together. We are in this world together, in this universe together. And when we can create conditions that are wholesome, that are happy, that are good, that reach for the best of who we can be, that reach for and expect the best that your friends can be, that your family can be. We can create that in our minds because we know beyond any doubt that this still consciousness is what it is that makes up our mind. Our mind is nothing more than the still consciousness, the stillness, this emptiness. It is the balance point right in the heart of the present moment. It is right where we're forming that relationship with the past as it moves to the future. that relationship in the stillness that crosses over, that passes from the past into the future. It's all coming out of this stillness of mind. It's all coming from this present moment. And as I've said, this present moment is very, very close to truth. It is, in fact, very close to what the Buddha was pointing to. It is very close to what arises out of the Eightfold Noble Path, the Fourth Noble Truth. When we look at the wisdom side, we start to develop now the right view of things and we have the right intention behind what that view is. And then with the moral side of our lives, we are able to notice and use right speech 
and are able to do the right action. And we will then naturally live with the right livelihood. And that's all when we're practicing just this way of developing this deep samadhi and the right mindfulness. So the concentration and the mindfulness and then the right energy. So the Eightfold Noble Path is right there, right there in our practice here and now. So many of these lists that the Buddha made for us, Four Noble Truths, the Five Hindrances. We notice now as we're watching the stillness and we're developing this peace and this purity in our mind, we notice that the first hindrance of desire and the second hindrance of, of aversion are moving away, are far away at the present. And there is just contentment in the mind. We can see, we can notice that. And we can also notice that the restlessness that we might have in us is also being balanced against our tiredness or our slothfulness. So the energy in our body now is just right. Because we can notice this, this beauty this still consciousness and be with it. And we can also know that the fifth hindrance of doubt is also starting to recede because we are starting to see the right view, the right way to see it, the way that the Buddha showed, the way that the Buddha demonstrated when he developed these four noble truths with the eightfold path as the fourth noble truth. We can start to understand better the first noble truth, the truth that all the conditions that come and go are dukkha. They have this element of suffering that's attached to them, unsatisfactoriness. But we can see with the third noble truth how things do finish. All of these conditions, they come into existence and then they, and then they finish. And this is very important for us as we're listening to ourselves with our troubles, our trials and our tribulations. We can have confidence in what the Buddha taught here. We can know that we can move towards this stillness right at the heart of the present moment, where reality lives. This is where we're real. And then as we practice more and more, we will have the opportunity to see deeper, to even glimpse the enlightenment that the Buddha promised is right here, right in the heart of the present moment. So I'm going to stop speaking now for a, a few minutes and just allow you to be with that stillness. And what I would like you to do is just to cultivate that stillness now, to amplify it, so that at the finish of this session, you can just bring that stillness with you back into the space, back into the room where, you're, where you are sitting. 
so that that stillness can become part of your life, part of who you are.
Now in a moment I'm going to ring the bell and I'll ring it three times and I would like you just to listen to the resonance of the three rings with your eyes closed and at the finish of the resonance on the third ring you can gently open your eyes and come back to the place where you are into the room that you are or the space that you're sitting in. But if you can, try and bring that still consciousness back with you so that when you open your eyes, that still consciousness is there too. So you can actually start to see the eye consciousness going out and attaching to whatever it's seeing and then returning, just in the same way, beginning and ending, watching the conditions around with all of their different scales, some things beginning and ending quite quickly, other things beginning and ending with a little bit more time, and some things beginning and ending in long, long lengths of time. So I trust that you have all enjoyed that meditation as much as what I did. And I also trust that you have brought back with you into your everyday life that still consciousness and that it is there now for you, resounding in your mind as you're watching the conditions as they come and go. So until next time, I'll bid you farewell. But don't forget that in a couple of weeks' time you will be able to call in to this centre and there will be volunteer listeners here to be able to listen to you, willing to hear your story and how you are going in your life. So with that I'll bid you uh, a good afternoon. <coughs>